Hello and welcome everyone to our webinar. Uh, today we will be treating or presenting uh, battery sizing with the Gen 24 Plus uh, inverter, hybrid inverter. And of course, uh, with me as usual to do it or uh, to, uh, to present today are my colleagues from South Africa and Kenya. Uh, first off, Mohamed Sidat, who is the technical sales advisor for Southern Africa. Uh, he operates from Johannesburg in South Africa. He is with Fronius South Africa, uh, which is an agency of Fronius International. Operating from Nairobi, Kenya, is uh, David Mwangi, who is the technical sales advisor for Eastern Africa. And then, of course, myself, Sipra Nokolo, the technical sales advisor for Western Africa, operating from Lagos, Nigeria. So um, just to shed more light on uh, our spotted regions, as we can clearly see, the regions are covered in uh, red, uh, uh, region, uh, the areas or countries covered are uh, supported by David Mwangi, as you can see them listed. And then the countries colored blue, uh, those uh, supported by me, and uh, if you notice, they are basically English speaking West African countries. And then uh, for Mo is uh, Southern Africa, as you can see them listed and colored green. So if you have any uh, inquiries, please uh, contact your respective regional technical sales advisor. Good, so to continue, I'd uh, also like to um, um, give some insights about our FSP Plus uh, partners. Uh, so these are sales partners that uh, also offer after sales services uh, which can also include technical support. So they are country-based Fronius distributors and uh, for a Sub-Saharan Africa region, as we can see their logos uh, listed here. They, apart from uh, distributing our inverters, they also keep a replacement part in stock. So meaning that all spare parts will and can be obtained from uh, FSP Plus. So if you reside in South Africa, Enomatic Solar and IBC Solar will be your stop point for uh, FSP Plus support. Uh, Namibia is uh, radio electronic. So Zimbabwe is a one-stop solar. Ghana is uh, covered or supported by Tino Solutions. And then for Kenya is uh, CAT, Green Spark, and Knights Energy. I'll also want to say at this point, by, uh, at this point that uh, Knights Energy also uh, add FSP Plus for Uganda. And then for Madagascar is Mada Green Power. And then uh, Mali is covered by Sonikara Solar Electro. And then finally, of course, not the least, is Components and Solutions Rack. That is the FSP Plus for Nigeria. Okay, so having done that, uh, let's now delve into the agenda for the webinar. As earlier stated, the title is Battery Sizing with the Gen 24 Plus Hybrid Inverter. So to start off, I will be taking us through uh, a very uh, important and uh, good uh, news uh, of uh, an inspection carried out by HTW Berlin uh, on energy storage uh, solutions. And then afterwards, my colleagues will now continue with the presentation uh, covering Fronius BYD storage solution uh, parallel operation, combination matrix, discharging and charging, uh, correct dimensioning of storage, uh, installation and commissioning. And of course, we'll also go through some use cases. So without further ado, let's now continue with the presentation. So as we all know, or would know, uh, the Fronius Gen 24 Plus inverter is a uniquely versatile uh, inverter that uh, utilizes PV power to provide uh, various solutions, including uh, charging, including storage, uh, EV, uh, energy management, and of course, uh, cooling and heating solutions. So who will now be um, giving us a bit of a detail, uh, as I mentioned earlier, about um, an inspection tests that usually comes in annually. So uh, I'll, I'm proud to announce here that uh, Fronius uh, Gen 24 Plus came first and uh, will be giving us a detail about it because uh, we're actually talking about uh, storage solutions in this particular webinar. 
So um, the energy storage inspection uh, for 2021 is basically carried out, or it's a test carried out by a University of Applied Sciences for Engineering and Economics. Uh, they look at the energy efficiency of residential PV storage systems. This is actually the fourth edition. And um, to make for transparency, uh, it, the test actually, the test results are actually collated by independent test lab laboratories. So meaning that uh, uh, the manufacturers submit their products to these independent test laboratories, and then the tests are now carried out on them. So for this year, 20 PV battery storage systems were entered for the competition or for the test. And then um, from, from Fronius, um, we went in with uh, the Gen 24 Plus series and the BYD premium battery box as a storage solution. So at the end of the day, uh, after all the tests and simulations are done, uh, the performances will be measured by uh, their respective system performance index. So uh, what are the backgrounds for this inspection? So usually, um, utmost transparency is of uh, um, importance. Um, as uh, in most cases, we have manufacturers that tend to uh, put in just uh, the maximum values only uh, instead of uh, usable values, uh, just to put it in perspective. Um, the usable battery capacity or storage capacity isn't always the same as the maximum or uh, available storage capacity. So taking uh, lead acid batteries, for example, because of their cell chemistry, uh, usually they have a DOD that is depth of discharge of about 50%, meaning that uh, if a battery, for example, has a storage capacity of about, uh, say, 100 kilowatt hour, the usable capacity should be 50 kilowatt hour. So you're not, or you're recommended not to use below or uh, yes, above this um, um, energy storage capacity for this particular battery type with this cell chemistry. So once you do that, it's going to limit or drastically reduce the lifetime of the battery. So um, these were all taken into consideration. And then of course, um, tests were carried out. So um, the composition of the storage inspection includes uh, the analysis of the storage market and then comparison of the system properties. And then uh, this will now be followed by uh, the tests or the simulation based on uh, um, the system evaluation, which will of course result to the SPI figures and then uh, FAQs subsequently. So what is SPI, that is System Performance Index? Uh, for uh, an ideal system, it is expected uh, to perform at 100%. But then that's theoretical. Realistically speaking, there isn't any system that is 100%. And what causes this are the various losses incurred um, during, uh, uh, during its uh, function. So um, once uh, these losses are subtracted from the inverter and battery storage uh, system, then the result is what we refer to as the SPI. And then these losses are actually comprised of sizing losses, uh, conversion losses, control losses, and uh, standby losses. So once all these losses are taken into consideration and subtracted from the efficiency of the system, of, of the storage system, of course, then what is now left is the system performance index. So for the test, we entered two, uh, uh, we entered in two categories, that is on the 5 kilowatts and the 10 kilowatts category. So for the 5 kilowatts category, we entered the Primo Gen 24 uh, uh, 6.0 plus with the BYD HVS 7.7 .7 kilowatt hour uh, storage capacity. And then for the 10 kilowatt category, we entered uh, the Simo Gen 24 10.0 plus with the BYD HVS 10.2 uh, kilowatt hour uh, storage capacity. 
So uh, when the test was carried out, uh, like I've earlier said, Fronius came tops uh, for the five kilowatt uh, category with an efficiency of 92.2%. Uh, and uh, it is the only manufacturer with this level of efficiency class uh, amongst all the competitors. So it's all, as you can see from the result here, it is the only manufacturer in efficiency class A, which is um, um, quite a very, very good one. And of course, a, a percentage more than the second uh, place. So, and uh, afterwards for the 10 uh, kilowatts category, uh, Fronius came a proud second place also. And um, also, as you can notice, also in class A, efficiency class A for this particular category. Um, yeah. And uh, it also, from the figure we uh, recorded, that is 94.6%, it's represented a 0.6% increase compared to uh, efficiency performance or SPI performance in this category, uh, the peak that's last year. Okay, so having said that, uh, we'll now take a look at uh, how the energy efficiency classes are defined. So um, for class A, for the five kilowatt uh, category, an efficiency class A is um, um, the system with efficiency class A should be equal or above 92%. And uh, if we recall from the two previous slides, we recorded 92.2%. And then uh, for uh, category 10 kilowatts, uh, efficiency class A is only attainable if you exceed or if you equal or exceed 93.5%. Uh, and as you can see, we exceeded that uh, quite well with 94.6%. Uh, so this means that uh, Fronius is the only manufacturer to achieve efficiency class A in both categories. So well done to um, Fronius and BYD battery uh, storage solution with 92.2% for five kilowatts peak and 94.6% efficiency for the 10 kilowatts peak. So having said that, I'll now uh, give us a brief detail about uh, the losses that uh, I earlier talked about. So if you look at uh, the graph uh, illustration um, on, on the slide, we can see details of, uh, this, the, of the losses which include sizing losses, conversion losses, control, uh, energy management, and standby losses. So for this, uh, we can see that uh, Fronius actually stood out in um, category E1, which uh, represents uh, the highest class, even after the subtraction of uh, all the losses. And uh, if, you take, uh, if we take a closer look, there is a particular loss that um, tends to um, constitute uh, the highest uh, percentage. And uh, a close look at this, we'll see that uh, it comes from uh, conversion losses. So these are losses that comes from conversion from one form of, um, of uh, power or energy to another, say converting from PV to AC or from PV to DC or from battery to AC. So uh, with this, we recorded the least conversion losses, uh, which is also contributory to uh, performance, uh, system performance index. So like I was uh, talking about, we our strength is actually uh, comes from the fact that we're able to work on our conversion losses and uh, reduce it to the dearest um, from uh, ranging from PV to AC, uh, PV to battery, AC to battery, and then battery to AC. We ranked uh, uh, the highest in the highest class as you can see our performance and uh, well uh, illustrated here. So um, we take energy conversion uh, as a very, um, very important uh, point for us to work on because it is also important in influencing uh, the factors for uh, system performance index. And uh, which is uh, one, uh, one reason for uh, high performance is our silicon uh, carbon um, technology that uh, we implement and uh, which of course implies that uh, you can have much more energy to use once you're able to reduce your conversion 
um, conversion losses. So, um, what are the benefits of a high system efficiency? Of course, um, you would have summaries that you would have um, higher usable energy. So, and um, to address this, two systems were compared uh, with the same um, uh, capacity, that is 10 kilowatts, uh, 10 kilowatts peak system of approximately 10,000 kilowatts um, hour generation per year. So once uh, the system were put in, in use, uh, we had a difference of 430 kilowatts hour per year. And with an average price of uh, 20 euro cents per kilowatt hour, um, you would end up having, or the system, the Fourier system, uh, you end up having uh, a savings of uh, 86 uh, euro per year. And then stretching that over a period of 10 years will earn you a savings of uh, 860 euros, thereby making uh, more energy to be used. And of course, uh, um, with the use of a, a much more highly efficient system. So we uh, made a very, very huge improvement in uh, standby losses compared to last year. Because our figure for last year in terms of our standby losses uh, was at 45 watts. So the standby losses are, are actually constitutes uh, three, um, three different uh, uh, loss classes. Uh, they include DC power consumption at a fully charged state of the battery, AC power consumption at the same state, and then of course AC power consumption um, of the power sensor. So we really worked on that. As you can see, our figure for last year was 45 watts, but our figure for this year was reduced to the barest, which is uh, just one watt. And I would say that is uh, really remarkable. So uh, with this, I have uh, come to the end of my part of the presentation. So it's indeed a good one for Fronius. And uh, my colleague Mo will come in to now give us uh, much more detail of uh, the Fronius and BYD storage solutions. So, Mo, if you are up, you can now continue from this point as I hand over presenter rights to you. Thank you very much, Suprin. I will now go through um, the phone news and BUID um, storage solution. So firstly, um, we'll just like to recap um, for those of you that have not yet been introduced to the Gen 24 product portfolio. Firstly, we have the Fronius Primo Gen 24 Plus, uh, which is on the left here on, of your screen. It's a single phase inverter. It comes in power class of three to six kilowatts. It has two MPPT trackers and one battery input. Then we also have the Fronia Simo Gen 24 Plus, which is a three-phase hybrid inverter. The power class that it is available in is between three to 10 kilowatts. It has two MPPT trackers and one battery input. All Gen 24 um, Plus devices are available. However, uh, you please need to make note that um, due to the worldwide shortage of chips, uh, which are affecting various industries, um, there has been a very slight delay uh, with the introduction of the Gen 24 Plus in certain markets. Um, the delay is about two months, but my recommendation is please just follow up with your technical sales advisor in order to find out the exact start of sales of the particular inverters for your market. Having a closer look at the Fronius Primo Gen 24 Plus inverter, um, it comes in power classes of between three to six kilowatts. Um, it has two MPPT trackers. So the first tracker um, has a much higher current capability than the second tracker. Here we can see the first tracker can take a maximum current of 22 amps, which is your short circuit current. And the second tracker can go up to 12 amps. With your battery input, um, the charging and discharging um, current 
um, is 22 amps, which is a huge advantage for installation because if you think of a cabling for 22 amps, it's a very thin cabling um, compared to if you had, you know, 150 amps or 100 amps, etc. Then moving on to the Fonia Simo Gen 24 Plus. Here we can see with this inverter, it comes in these power classes, three, four, and five kilowatts. It also has two MPPT trackers. The first tracker is 12.5 amps, and the second tracker is also 12.5 amps. The battery input is 12.5 amps, and with the prime, with the sorry, with the Simo Gen 24 Plus, um, the power class three to five kilowatts. It has an integrated PV point. If we look at the power class from 6 to 10 kilowatts on the Simo Gen 24 Plus, it has two MPPT trackers. Um, the first tracker has a current capability of 25 amps, and the second tracker has a current capability of 12.5 amps. It has a single battery input of 22 amps. With this power class, it has PV point and full backup. Moving on, with the BYD storage, we're just going to chat about the combination matrix. And we're basically, basically going to have a look at the compatibilities and maximum charging, discharging power um, of the system. Playing your very simple um, calculation here on the top, which is the easy calculation of charging and discharging power, which is basically power is equal to voltage times current. Your module voltage for the HVS is 100 volts per module. So if some of you are already familiar with the BYD um, premium battery range, it comes in a stackable approach. So each module is like a stack that basically stacks on onto each other, okay, in series. So for example, the HVS, um, each stack is 100 volts, and the HVM, each stack is 50 volts. The current example for the Fronia Simo Gen 24 Plus, as you saw earlier on, it's 22 amps. That's your charging and discharging current. Now, having a look at this table over here, uh, we can clearly see um, your BYD battery box premium, your sizing here on the top. So, for example, the HVS is 5.1 kilowatt hours. And for example, this one over here, HVM 22.1, is the HVM 22.1 kilowatt hours. What is the difference between the HVS and HVM? The difference is over here. The HVS per stack is 100 volts and the HVM per stack is 50 volts. What is the nominal voltage of the battery for HVS 5.1? The nominal voltage is 204.8 volts. So you can see it's a high voltage battery. For example, the nominal voltage of the, let's have a look at the HVM 22.1 is 409.6 volts. Uh, but what can clearly be seen is if we move from the HVS 5.1 to the HVS 7.7, there's an increase in nominal voltage by about 100 volts. The reason for that is each stack of the HVS is 100 volts, which translates to about 2.56 kilowatt hours. So if you add 2.56 kilowatt hours onto this value, you get 7.7, .7, and you're obviously adding them in series, so the voltage increases by almost 100. And this is why we see those values and so on for HVS 10.2. For the HVM, for example, if you're looking at the 11 to the 13.8, here we can see an increase in nominal voltage of about 50 volts. And this is because the HVM is 50 volts per stack. Then having a look at the maximum charge and discharge current of the Gen 24 Plus. For the Simo Gen 24 Plus from three to five kilowatts, that is 12.5 amps. And for the Primo Gen 24 Plus, which is from 3 to 6 kilowatts, and the Simo Gen 24 Plus, which is from 6 to 10 kilowatts, the charging and discharging current is 22 amps. Moving on, we will now have a look at the charging and discharging power. And with the Fronius Gen 24 Plus, we can provide you a maximum of 9 kilowatts worth of charging and discharging power in full backup mode. Okay, so what I'm showing you now on this table is um, here on the left-hand column, this is the applicable Gen 24 Fronius inverters. Here on the top, this is the size um, variant of the BYD battery. And here in the middle is basically your charging and discharging represented in kilowatts. Okay, 
capability of the inverter. For example, if you look at this first um, block over here, with the HVS 7.7 .7 kilowatt hour battery, if that is installed with a Primo Gen 24 plus 6 kilowatt inverter, we can discharge a maximum of 6.2 kilowatts in an hour. Okay, so that's the discharge capability of the um, maximum discharge capability of the Gen 24 plus for the Primo 6 kilowatt variant. So on, as you can see, if you have an HVM 16.6, it will still be 6.2. And if you have an HVM 19.3, it will still be 6.2 kilowatts. Then, for example, if you look at this block over here, the HVS 10.2, we go down, we then go to the corresponding row, which is the Simo Gen 24 plus 10 kilowatt inverter. Here we can see the maximum discharge charging rate is 9.01 kilowatts. Okay. And so on. As you can see, if you go from different variants of batteries, so if you jump from the HVS 10.2 to the HVM 11, here we can see obviously the charging and discharging gets lower to 4.51 and so on. For example, if you look at the HVM 22.1, we back at 9.01. Um, this is why this table is very important. If you are planning a system for your consumer, um, please make sure that you, um, especially when the grid is not available and the system needs to be supplied purely by backup power and when there's no solar irradiation available, then it's very important that you get um, your charging and discharging rates correct. Because, for example, if I have a Simo Gen 24 plus 10 kilowatt inverter, and if I install it with the HVS 10.2 kilowatt hour battery, and if, for example, there's load shedding, so there's no grid available, and there's no solar irradiation available, then what will happen if I have a load of 11 kilowatts, which is greater than 9.01 uh, kilowatt discharging rate of the inverter, the system will obviously trip. Um, so that that's why I said it's very important to please always get your um, discharging and charging um, rates correct for the applicable load. Okay, moving on. We will now discuss the BYD parallel operation of the batteries. Um, so with the BYD uh, battery stack, as you can clearly see it in this picture over here, um, as I mentioned earlier on, each stack is represented by a light gray box. And as you can see, the stacks basically add on to each other in series. Okay. Um, then on the top, we have the black box, which is the BMS system. Um, however, as you can see on this slide, you can basically parallel up to three towers together. When you parallel these battery towers, the voltage basically goes into parallel. And this, the currents add up because it's going to be a parallel circuit. Okay. So we can parallel up to three storage units, and this will give us a maximum storage capacity for the Gen 24 Plus system of 57.96 kilowatt hours. Okay. And this will allow you to realize small commercial systems. And you can basically offer them full backup power capability. Attention, very important parameter here is that you cannot parallel three HVM 22.1 in parallel. Okay. Okay, moving on, for the BYD parallel operation, if you are going to do storage cascading, let's have a look um, at the BYD battery box premium. Here we can see if you add two of them in parallel or three of them in parallel. If, for example, if you add two of the HVS 5.1 in parallel, it will give us a output power of 10.24 kilowatt hours. If you add three of them in parallel, it will give us a output power of 15.36 kilowatt hours and so on. Okay, please make sure that you also, if you are going to parallel towers, that you parallel them and use them with the correct Gen 24 Plus inverter. For example, you can see the Simo Gen 24 Plus will be compatible with all these different combinations of paralleling. Okay, the Primo Gen 24 Plus, however, is a bit more particular. And for this inverter, it will not be able to work with the HVS 10.2, but it can work with the HVS 7.7. .7. Uh, and so on. So just please make sure that you always refer to these tables uh, before you plan a system for your customer. Okay, moving on. If you're looking at your maximum backup power for full backup, please do note if you have a three-phase Gen 24, we can supply you with three-phase full backup power. We can supply the entire household. However, please do take note that we have a switch over time. So whenever the grid goes down, 
the Gen 24 will basically not produce or supply any load for less than 60 seconds. The reason for this is that we need to have enough time in order to ensure that we are safely disconnected from the grid and that we can basically ensure that we follow all the parameters set out by the grid utility for when we need to disconnect. Okay, and that's really the whole reason behind the um, disconnection time. So again, I just want to make this very clear. Um, please do not use the Gen24 Plus as a UPS system. It is not a UPS system, it is a hybrid solar inverter. We can supply electrical load, single phase and three phase in backup. Um, with your maximum energy consumption, you can do parallel supplying of loads and also charging of the battery at the same time. Moving on, I'm now gonna discuss the PV points. Um, as I showed you earlier on, the PV point comes standard on each Fronius Gen24 Plus inverter. It comes standard for free. You don't have to pay any additional amounts. It's there as standard. The real advantage of the PV point is that you don't need any battery for backup power. As long as you have solar irradiation coming through, you can supply a maximum of three kilowatts single phase, no matter which Gen24 inverter you have. Again, it's very easy installation. You don't need any relays or any disconnection box. Um, it's straight out from the inverter um, to your load. Moving on to the next section, we're now gonna have a look at the correct dimensioning of um, PV storage. So how do you size a battery? Um, the first step is the first calculation. And you need to do a rough calculation based on the annual electricity consumption or the installed PV generator output. And this really is the approximate value, okay? You can also use the Fronia Solar Configurator, which is our online tool. And this will allow you to plan your PV systems and also your storage calculations. You can basically um, do stored or predefined load profiles um, on this application as well. You can also select between selected storage versus optimum storage. So when you play around with the software, um, we will also suggest a better alternative to the one that you're actually thinking about, which is really good as well. We also have Fronia SolarWeb, where on Fronia SolarWeb, you can do um, the battery storage simulation. Um, so the really cool thing about SolarWeb is that you can go and install a Gen24 Plus system for your um, consumer, okay? You can leave the system there for a year or two um, until, you know, you can basically then go onto SolarWeb and you can then run a simulation on SolarWeb to see what will happen if you actually add battery storage for your um, customer. And you can then take that and show your customer that, hey, look, if you add battery storage, you can improve your system by this much. How do you size a battery? Um, I'm gonna break this into two parts. I'm gonna show you a rough initial calculation. And then I'm also gonna move on to show you a more exact uh, um, calculation. Uh, but with the rough calculation, um, let's say if we have an annual electricity consumption of 8,000 kilowatt hours, and let's say we have an eight kilowatt peak PV generator. We need to do a calcul calculation of a recommended battery size. So if you look at the family um, recommended battery size, so with a family um, profile, this refers to somebody who works at home, okay? And he uses his washing machine, his dishwasher, um, he maybe showers at 2 p.m. Um, so he, his load is a family load. Okay, so if you look at his load, we're gonna take the PV generator and multiply it by a factor of 1.2. So this is the key factor, okay? And this will give you a proposal of 9.6 kilowatt hours for the battery storage for the family profile. And this basically translates to the BYD battery box HVS 10.2. If, for example, um, the customer is employed, so when we refer to as in, as a employee profile, this customer works at an office. He does not work at home. Um, so basically, he only switches on his geezer, his stove, his oven, his washing machine when he gets back home, which is usually after five or six p.m. when there's no more any solar irradiation. Okay, so obviously, he's going to rely on his battery as being the source of power. Okay, not really the solar irradiation coming from the panels. 
So for this um, profile, we obviously the factor is obviously increased. So instead of using a factor of 1.2, we propose to use a factor of 1.5. So doing this calculation, we get a you know a suggestion of 12 kilowatt hours. So here we can see that the closest battery storage, we, all, we obviously go higher than 12 kilowatt hours. And the closest to that would be the HVM 13.8. Okay, now I'm going to show you a more exact calculation for you know, nighttime consumption. Um, to think about it, for a hybrid system, we usually should only use a battery, the majority of the battery, for nighttime consumption. We should try and rely on the solar irra irradiation during the day. Um, for power. Okay, so if you are going to size the battery for nighttime consumption, um, a more exact calculation that we could look at is that we could, firstly, we need to look at the efficiency of the battery storage, which for the BYD HVM, it is 96%. That is very important to note. Then we need to do a load anal analysis of the nighttime load. Okay, and we can then size the battery and we then basically size it. We basically take your nighttime load and divide it by the efficiency of the BYD battery. And this is how we can maybe get a more exact um, calculation compared to the rough calculations that, that I showed you earlier on. Moving on, um, you can also use the Fronia Solar Configurator, which is a free online tool for system de design with Fronia's products and solutions. We provide you latest data from compatible battery storage systems. Uh, we also provide you a customized customized design for individual requirements. And the real advantage of this is that we give the output to you in a clear PDF report. Um, if you do want to access this program, you can you know, this, copy this link and paste it in your browser, and you can basically access this platform. Now, having a look at a practical example of the solar configurator, this is how the platform looks. Um, so here we can see your, you can choose your PV module manufacturer. You can choose the model of the module. You can choose the amount of modules per array, you can choose the ambient temperatures, the power gain if you're using a bifacial uh, module, the country of installation, uh, which Fronis inverter are you using, the type, uh, what is your inverter ratio, which basically translates to your percentage DC of oversizing or undersizing, your project name, the storage, so what is the storage size of the BYD battery you're looking at, what is the annual power consumption of your consumer, and again, what is the load profile, is, is the load profile employed or family? Once you do that, we will then give you recommendations. Uh, we will give you a storage compatibility check with the inverter, uh, annual power consumption, load profile, selected versus optimum storage output that we can provide, um, comparison of self-sufficiency and self-consumption ratios. Okay, so this is basically um, how these blocks correspond. Okay, I'll now be handing over to my colleague, David, who will run you through the use cases. David? So thank you so much, Mohammed, for your wonderful presentation. I'll be checking over and look at the use cases of the BYD battery system, storage system in combination with the Gen24. And we start off by looking at some use cases. And for this particular uh, for these particular use cases, we are going to focus on a 58 kilowatt hour storage uh, system. And this would be ideal for small commercial uh, systems or applications. So this example, we start with a trading company. And how this can be applied is by having, first of all, a 39.7 kilowatt peak PV system. And therefore, in this setup, we could be having one Simogen 24, uh, 10 kilowatt uh, inverter. In addition to that, you also combine with a Simo uh, 20 kilowatt and a Simo 10 uh, kilowatt inverter. In, in terms of the battery storage, uh, as has already been shown that you can be able to cascade uh, different power stacks, battery stacks. So in this particular example, uh, this has been worked out with a 44.16 kilowatt hour storage. And this would basically be two by BYD HVM 22.1 kilowatt batteries. The load that, has, that is powered by this uh, particular application includes a heat pump, 
hot water preparation using the own pilot, which is taking up to nine kilowatts using the heating rods, as well as an EV charging system. So the analysis as, as can be uh, seen from the graphs below is that even during springtime, the electricity demand can basically be completely supplied by the storage system even at night. So therefore this allows this particular customer to minimize uh, grid feeding uh, to a low level as possible. The second uh, use case or reference example used for an agricultural facility is for an example that is utilizing 49 kilowatt peak of PV power. And therefore this also has a, a Gen 24 plus 10 kilowatt inverter, one SIMO 20 and one SIMO 10 inverter. Similarly, it has a 44.16 kilowatt hour. And in terms of the loads that are supported for this particular application, includes an automatic feeding system, a ventilation in the sheds, as well as the milk cooling system. One key highlight about this particular application is the fact that even in winter months, the complete electricity demand is covered by the storage in the PV, uh, power supplied by the PV system. And therefore, uh, it means that uh, there can be also additional uses from the storage in, in terms of even heating as well as uh, charging of vehicles. Another particular example that we can give you in terms of how this uh, storage system can be quite effective is also an agricultural facility that is using 15, point, 15 kilowatt peak of PV power. And this has only one SIMO Gen 24 inverter, 10 kilowatts. And the storage is about uh, 57.96 kilowatt hours. And these are three stacks of HVM 9.3 kilowatt hour BYD batteries. So the key highlight here is that there is very high consumption in the morning hours as well as evening hours. And these are corresponding to how machinery and other uh, appliances are used in this particular site. And the peak loads of about 15 kilowatts for this particular customer are to the biggest extent also supplied by the storage unit and therefore minimizing how much power is taken from the grid as can be seen here in the graphs below. When you look at the Gen24 Plus inverter, it's uh, an inverter that will allow you to also integrate uh, storage in existing uh, systems that are using Fronius inverters. So, and what would be required for you to do the extension or to integrate the Gen24 with storage will be, of course, the hybrid inverter. Then the system could have one or more existing Fronius inverter, could be the Fronius Snap Inverter Series all the new uh, Tauro Echo. Then you have the PV generator, could be connected to the uh, PV inverter only, or also to the hybrid inverter, the Gen24. And then you can have one up to a maximum of three uh, storage units uh, stuck together, uh, the BYD, HVS, or HVM. And then in terms of energy profiling and communication or consumption data to Fronia SolarWeb, it's always recommended that that kind of system is fitted with at least one smart meter. But for the Gen24 setup, you can have a maximum of three smart meters included in the setup. Looking at the power flows for that particular kind of setup, then you can see that you have uh, two possible power flows. In the green area, or the, the one that is shown in green, we can see that we have simultaneous uh, flow of power for loads consumption, battery charging as, uh, from the DC as well as the AC side, as can, can be seen. Then the blue area is also showing us the simultaneous uh, power flow uh, for supply of loads via the DC and AC. And therefore, adding uh, the Gen24 Plus inverter in an existing system with a Fronius inverter makes it uh, quite uh, flexible in terms of power flow or energy flows. And therefore, this can also be, uh, like I've mentioned, be integrated directly by having the Gen24 connected to its own PV array system. And therefore, that brings the aspect of AC coupling the existing uh, SNAP inverter to the Gen24 system. What would be unique in this particular case would be that in case of a grid failure, then the Gen24 would create a slightly higher frequency operating uh, range that would uh, sort of isolate the existing uh, Fronius uh, inverter. And therefore, in that particular case, the Gen24 would power the appliances in full backup mode from the battery and the PV array that is connected to the 
Gen24 battery, I, I mean inverter. You can also extend uh, the Gen24 backup possibilities uh, for larger storage capabilities, therefore giving you even higher efficiencies. So 100% uh, percent uh, backup uh, capability in combination with the uh, Fronius Primo Gen24 as well as the Simo series of the Gen24. And also uh, another inverter that we refer to as the Simo hybrid that is not uh, too common in Africa. So this would sort of allow you to eliminate the need for a diesel generator by combining this kind of uh, storage faci facilities and therefore uh, uh, be able also to do away with things like uh, noise and uh, worry about exhaust forms, fumes and stuff like that. So very simple integration into the in-house grid for, uh, for let's say commercial and uh, domestic applications, light commercial and domestic applications. So uh, having said that, I would learn, now like to give you some brief information about the installation and commissioning procedure of the Gen24 Plus and the BYD battery storage system. So there is a, a procedure that needs to be followed when you are uh, connecting the BYD battery to the Gen24 Plus inverter. And the procedure basically uh, requires that you, uh, you might the sequence when switching the power on. So you have to start by switching on the battery. As you can see here, this will be step number one. And the AC power would be required to be put off in this particular case. And then number two will be to switch on the inverter, which will be done using the DC disconnector, as you can see. So that allows the Gen24 and the BYD batteries to synchronize and be able to communicate uh, as required before you even switch on your uh, your AC power or the loads that are going to be sub supported by the combination of the two. So please take note of that uh, because this is a very important commissioning st step for the BYD and Gen24 combination. In terms of the installation of the uh, Gen24 Plus inverter itself, very, very fast and easy installation procedure. As already you know from the Snap Inverter series, uh, uh, they come with a mounting bracket this will be the same for the Gen24 Plus series. So it will come with a lightweight uh, wall bracket in, onto which after you screw it to the wall, you snap the, uh, the inverter into that mounting bracket. And then for access to the uh, connection area, this is fitted with uh, 180 degrees fast locking screws. So you don't need to turn the screw the full 360 degrees for it to open. So you just turn it to 180 degrees, either anti-clockwise for opening and clockwise for locking, and you're able to secure the, the screw accordingly. And then when you are coming to the connection of the cabling to the uh, connection area, you do not require any special tools. No talk uh, is required to be adjusted as the, uh, the terminals that are provided are basically uh, spring connection types. So you open a flap on one terminal, and once you insert your cable as shown here, you put it back and the cable is securely held in the terminal block. This now shows us the connection area of the uh, Fronius Primogen 24 Plus inverter. As we can see, uh, there are uh, uh, several key areas that you need to be familiar with. There is the PV area as well as the battery area. And the PV area is also uh, divided into several uh, sections as you can see here. So it has the positive terminal block as well as the negative terminal block. So it has uh, two strings for the PV plus and one connection for the battery plus. And then the negative terminal block will have the two strings connections for the PV area and then the negative connection for the battery area. The other important uh, part would be of course the AC connection area for the single phase inverter. And as you can see here, we also have two connection areas for AC power. So we have the normal uh, AC connection and the uh, PV point connection uh, area here. So the PV point and the AC connection area are situated in the same section because those will be outputting AC power, uh, both of them. And then of course we do have the pilot uh, in the middle uh, where uh, this is the communication component for the Gen24 plus inverters as opposed to the snap inverters. So the snap inverters are utilizing what we refer to as the data manager but the uh, Gen24 as well as the Tauro inverters will be making use of 
this pilot device for communication. So in terms of now, uh, when you're connecting the Gen24 Plus inverter to the BYD battery, the communication between the two will happen through the Modbus RTU RS485 interface that is provided. So the pilot is going to be one side of that communication and the BMS that is on the uh, BYD battery stack will be the other side of the communication. Looking at the uh, Gen24 area, uh, the pilot, it has two Modbus channels that are possible to be connected. So it has channel zero and channel one uh, that can be operated for Modbus con communication. And of course, uh, as already is the procedure when you're using Modbus communication, you have to remember to activate the uh, terminal resistance you, by switching on or off the, the provided deep switch on the pilot uh, itself. And then of course also on the Gen20, on the BYD battery box, you also have to activate uh, that uh, uh, termination uh, resistance. This gives us an example of uh, the Simo hybrid and how you can also connect using the, the data manager or the hybrid manager card. So as you can see, there's a bit of a difference with the Gen24 plus because this looks pretty much like the standard data manager card with the orange block that houses the Modbus communication channel. As you can see here, also uh, the termination resistance is activated by switching on the deep switch that is provided, uh, and therefore that activates the 120 ohms that are required to ensure that the Modbus communication happens without any interferences. To be able to commission the Gen24 Plus, you just do it in a very simple process. We recommend that you download the Solar.Start app, either from the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. And the communication, the, commi the commissioning will happen in three very simple steps. And this will allow that uh, you do it in a very fast way. And uh, once you activate the Wi-Fi access point from the Gen24, as has been detailed uh, in other trainings, then the, co the connection between your mobile device that has the solar.start app and the Gen24 will happen automatically. So it offers the easiest commissioning that you can talk about in the market. So once you ac activate the Wi-Fi access point, you do not need to do anything in your mobile device as, as long as it has its Wi-Fi uh, connection activated. Then how do you uh, activate the battery in the Fronius Gen24 Plus inverter? This can be done in two ways. Number one is through the product wizard during the initial commissioning. And this is through the technician access uh, area or the account access. Or once you have passed that uh, product wizard, then you can do it at any uh, time later through the web interface of the uh, Gen24 Plus inverter. So as you can see here, uh, very simple, you have to select only the battery that you're using that is provided within the setup of the Gen24 Plus user web user interface and then you also choose whether you want to charge the battery from the grid or you want only to charge from the pv power that is coming uh, from your pv installation so once you do that then you simply click on add and that particular battery is added provided that you have already uh, created or done the installation for modbus communication between the, the pilot and the gen 24 and the byd bms system this shows us how to uh, commission uh, the Fronius Simo Hybrid and the BYD battery. But like I mentioned, the, B the Simo Hybrid is not an inverter that we foresee being used too much in Africa. So the focus will mostly be the Gen24 Plus inverter series. So that brings us to the end of that quick session on uh, quick commissioning of the Gen24 Plus inverters. But before we finish, I would like to give you some further information uh, if you're looking for extra information on all our products, we recommend that you visit our website. Uh, so it's very clearly and well laid out and you can get a lot of information as an installer for different kinds of products. Then also you can visit our YouTube channel where we have a lot of videos that are already listed, webinar recordings and so forth. But more uh, on top of that, we also have a dedicated uh, YouTube channel with a playlist for the Sub-Sahara Africa. And from there, you can also see all the webinars that we have done before and refresh your knowledge on all our products and solutions. 
For additional information, if you require very specific assistance, you can get in touch with any of us. Uh, for Southern Africa, get in touch with Mohammed, and for Western Africa, get in touch with Cyprian. And for the East African region, you can always reach out to me via email or by phone. So, and also for trainings, if you want to check which other trainings have been scheduled uh, within Fronius, you can always get in touch via these uh, email addresses or phone numbers that are provided uh, above. So. And that basically brings us to the end of our session today. We would like to thank you sincerely for taking your time to attend our uh, webinar today. And we look forward to hosting you for the next uh, scheduled webinars next on Friday, next week and the weeks after that. So with that, uh, thank you so much and we wish you a good rest of the day and goodbye for now.